I'm Jenny. Today I'm visiting the State Institute for Chemical and Veterinary Analysis of Food in Freiburg. I will be meeting Ulrich Weiblinger and Miriam Schillinger. The Institute analyzes food for traces of genetically modified plants. I would like to find out today what method they use and how the analysis works. Hello Miriam, hello Uli. Hello. I've brought a bag of tortilla chips with me. Would you be able to analyze them and would that make any sense? We can definitely do that and it makes total sense. Genetically modified maize is extensively grown in North and South America and also in Europe in some countries. Therefore I'd suggest we have a closer look at these crisps. Why do you have to do these analyses? Well, there are regulations in Europe, very strict ones, according to which even small quantities of unauthorized genetically modified products are forbidden in food. For this sack of rice, for example, not even one grain would be allowed. Authorized products are allowed in restricted quantities. Maximum of 0.9% is legal in food products. Now, we first have to grind your maize crisps into a fine powder to get the DNA. Here we've got our final cleaned up DNA solution. We can now proceed to the next step and prepare the PCR. How do you analyze the DNA now? Now we have to assure that we can amplify the small segment that only occurs in genetically modified maize in order to be able to detect it. To achieve this, we use a specific method called polymerase chain reaction, or PCR, a kind of DNA copying machine. And what is it then that Miriam is pipetting here? Of course, we need our DNA, then we need detection molecules called primers, which exactly fit the DNA segments that occur very often in genetically modified maize. We also need the enzyme polymerase, and finally, nucleotides, the DNA building blocks. What will happen in this machine now? This is where the actual PCR reaction is now going to take place. First of all, the reaction mix is heated and the double-stranded DNA dissolves into two separate strands. In the second step, we lower the temperature to allow the primers to anneal very specifically to the template DNA. This will, of course, only happen if our template exactly matches the detection molecules, the primers. The last step is the elongation of the DNA chains, in which the polymerase takes building block after building block from the reaction mix and adds them to the growing strand. Looking at the whole process, we can say that we formed two molecules out of one molecule in this first round of replication. In a second round, out of two molecules we could make four, and if we repeat the reaction 45 times, we'll be able to produce several million identical copies. How is it possible to see now whether my maize chips actually contained any genetically modified DNA? If they did contain genetically modified DNA, we'd expect that the PCR reaction would produce a fragment of a specific size. In the gel electrophoresis here, we're able to separate DNA fragments very sensitively according to their size and make them visible. These fragments move through a gel in an electric field, and small fragments move faster through the pores of the gel than longer fragments. Well, on the picture of the gel, we can now see it clearly. Our sample really does contain genetically modified maize. Or well, let's say we can suppose that it does. Our control experiment, genetically modified maize, is positive, as we'd expect, but the same fragment has also formed in our sample. And now the question remains as to what maize variety this is, whether it's the genetically modified maize variety, MON 810, and how much of it is present. In order to find that out, we need real-time PCR. So, 
we've analyzed the DNA again very specifically using real-time PCR. According to the fluorescence that's produced during the PCR reaction, we can see how much of the genetically modified fragment is present and also from which maize variety it stems. Do these results already tell you which variety it is? Yes, we tested specifically for MON 810, a variety that's very often contained in food products, and we did actually detect it here too, but it looks like it was only very little, only in the range of traces really, below 0.1%. I see, so they wouldn't have had to put a label on my bag of crisps. Okay, thank you very much.